Well, hi everybody, how are you guys? It's me, Izzy again, Israel Gurieb. Welcome to my channel. And if you are wondering what we're gonna talk about today in this video, well, my friends, we're gonna talk about IELTS writing task one. And more specifically, we're gonna go through line graph essays. Well, if you are wondering why line graph essays, well, first of all, it's our tradition that to go through line graphs first when we go into task one. It, this, this has become our tradition, we've been, we've been doing it for ages, and this is how we were trained by, by our uh, teachers and whatnot. So that's why um, I'd like to start with that. Well, the second thing is that line graphs give you the most essential line, uh, task one language that is available if you want to learn, if you want to improve your what uh, task one knowledge, right? It gives you full understanding of what task one is actually like, right? And thirdly, task one is in and of itself the most important one because it uh, come, comes up in the test at around, what, 40 to 55% of the time, right? So the frequency and the possibility of you getting a line graph essay when you go to real examination is much higher than the other types of task one essays. So that's why my friends, uh, as a teacher myself, uh, who teaches IELTS, uh, who teaches TOEFL, English, uh, general English, and uh, English grammar to the students who want to enter state universities, I feel proud and I feel the privilege uh, to be sharing some of my tips and methodologies that I have been uh, putting into practice uh, for the duration of the time that I've been uh, working as a teacher at an education center that's called Everest, right? Which has, by the way, recently won the Advic marketing campaign. And if you give a shit, go to the website, special website, and check that out for yourself, my friends. Um, well, I want to really emphasize one thing, my friends. I've been doing this thing uh, for as long as I can remember. And today, I want to tell you guys that my methodology covers uh, line graphs a little bit more uh, different than what uh, other education centers do. And if you get that in a different fashion, then do, do not be surprised because everybody teaches differently and everybody studies differently, right? So that's why um, uh, let's get, on, get back on the bandwagon, my friends. Well, first of all, there are 15 different separate departments that I teach if I want to explain line graphs to my students. And so far, I have already taught 12 of them. Today, our focus will be paid, paid to uh, 13s and 14s departments. And this is what we're going to focus on, my friends. If you are ready, then thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Now, you're going to be provided with some awesome explanations with some crazy charts, but they're going to be very informative and they're going to be an eye-opener for you. Well then, let's talk about it, my friends. 13th segment, which talks about peaks and lows uh, in IELTS Task 1. And it's not just IELTS uh, line graph, but the whole IELTS Task 1 spectrum goes into that. Uh, the things that you learn in this could be used for pie graphs, bar graphs, or any uh, chart that represents uh, trends or dynamics, right, which uh, change over time. Here, let's uh, talk first about peaks. Peaks are the highest points in a line graph, right? Well, there are some expressions that you can use to uh, describe peaks. First one, to reach a peak at percentage slash uh, number to hit a pick at percentage slash number or you can use to reach to hit a zenith at percentage slash number and lastly you can also use to reach or to hit the highest point at percentage slash number now my friends with that expression in mind let's take a look at the example that's provided here for us well, the y-axis shows the percentage signs, percentage numbers from 10 to 60 percent and the x-axis shows the period, 10-year period from 2000 to 2010. And obviously this line graph right here emphasizes the um, pick point which is uh, shown towards the end of the period and uh, which is indicated by an arrow by the way on top. And this uh, example talks about the percentage of polluted areas. Now, let me read it out for you guys. The percentage of polluted areas stood at only 10%, at only 10%, yes, before it reached a peak at 60% halfway through the period. All right, 
However, the rest of the period saw a decreasing dynamic in, the, in this index, right? So uh, I'm sure that this is clear for you guys and try to uh, like try to read the example once again if you didn't understand and I'm sure uh, you're gonna get the better of it. Let's talk about lows now. The lows are the lowest points my friends in the line graph and the obvious, obviously the two verbs that we have used to describe picks are used here as well to describe lows to reach to hit a low of or at percentage slash number you can also say to hit or to reach the highest point at percentage or slash uh, number and lastly you can also use the bottom out which is a phrasal verb by the way and it's totally fine to use them in uh, use this in your essay to bottom out at percentage slash number all right, let's take a look at the example, my friends. Now, again, 10 to 60% on the y-axis, and the x-axis shows a period of, what, how many years? Five years, from 2005 to 2010. Obviously, the graph emphasized the lowest point here, which is indicated by an arrow from the bottom. Um, well, let let me read the sentence. It's It shows what talks about mortality rate in Japan. The rate of mortality in Japan hit the lowest point at 20%. Okay, is it the lowest point? Let me check that. All right, yes, it's in between uh, 30 and tw uh, 10, which would be 20%. Yes, that's true. The rate of mortality in Japan hit the lowest point at 20% before rising back to about 50% at the end of the period. All right, at the end, did it rise back to 50%? Yes, of course. It was just before 60%, so which means it was 50%. This is how uh, sentences are made, my friends. All right, 14th segment talks about describing big changes. X2, X3, X4, right? What do they mean? Well, X2 means when there is a like twofold increase, right? For example, in the first one, a line increasing from 20% to 40%, so X2, right? There's a twofold increase. And the verb form of describing this would be to use to double, right? The line doubled from 20% to 40%. But how about a noun form? There was a doubling of something something from 20% to 40% in the year blah blah blah, right? Well, x3 is used when there's a threefold increase. Let's say a line graph increasing from 20% to 60%, right? There are actually two pairs of verbs and two pairs of nouns, right? To triple, to treble. Those are verb forms. And the tripling and trebling, these are the noun ver uh, forms. And um, how do I describe a line graph that uh, increased? Uh, by a that, that indicated a threefold increase. Well, the line graph or the number of orange salt or the percentage of orange salt uh, tripled from 20% to 60% during the period under question, for example. Or in the noun form, there was a tripling in the number or in the percentage of orange salt from 20% to 60%. Or there was a threefold increase in the percentage of orange salt from 20% to 60% during the period. Well, and the third one, when we use X4, when there is a fourfold increase. Let's say a line graph increasing from 20% to 80%. The verb form uh, for, to describe that would be to use quadruple, right? The noun form would be quadrupling, right? So let's say the percentage of orange salt quadrupled from 20% to 80%, which was a massive increase during the period under question. Or there was a quadrupling in the percentage of orange salt from 20% to 80% from 2010 to 2015, right? I'm talking about years, actually. But, my friends, what if reverse happens? What if 40% uh, something goes back to 20%? Do you use a twofold increase or doubling? No way. No way you use that. What you use here is to half 
or which is a verb form or a halving which is a noun form and uh, pay attention to V replacing F because it's being followed by ING by the way um, so the figure the figures halved from 20% uh, 40% to 20% right or uh, in noun form there was a halving uh, in the percentage of orange salt from 40% to 20% or there was a twofold decrease in the percentage of orange salt from 40% to 20% so these are the phrases well let's take a look at the example that's provided for x2 x3 x4 my friends well the example talks about the percentage of those who took uh, two different tests worldwide well the y-axis shows the percentages from 10 to 60 percent and the x-axis shows a period of six years starting from 2010 to 2016 well uh, the red line talks about IELTS test takers and the black one talks about how many TOEFL test takers there were during the period given. Well, the first sentence is about TOEFL test takers, actually. Pay attention to the black one, my friends. Well, it goes from 60% to 10%, right? So it might be talking about a threefold decrease, right? All right, yes, that's the one. Now read me the sent. Uh, let me read the sentence. Uh, the percentage of TOEFL test takers around the world indicated a threefold decrease from 60% in 2010 to 20% in 2016, right? I mean, did it show that? Of course, yes. Um, the second one, however, there was approximately a doubling in the proportion of students who took IELTS between 20% and 40% during the period under question all right pay attention to the red line my friends uh well at the start it was in between 30 and 10 right which was 20 percent yes and in it increased uh all the way up to 40 percent yes that's true so you see for 20 percent to 40 percent there is a twofold increase and we are using a doubling right Pay attention to the uses, my friends. Pay attention, pay attention to all the things that have just been explained, uh, how they are being used in sentences now. And by the way, make sure that you use these big change quantifiers with proper structures. Because uh, we've talked about structures before and we've talked about four of them. The first structure, subject plus verb plus adverb and plus object. Here it's inappropriate and you cannot use that structure with the uh x2 x3 x4 because uh you're not using any adverb here right so uh second structure there was adjective plus noun in subject and um, third structure spe special well the third structure is subject plus special verb followed by an adjective plus noun and plus object and the last four structure is an integrated structure which integrates the second and third structures together. That's why we call them integrated structure. Um, there was a passive verb plus adjective plus noun in plus subject, right? So passive verb could be any of these verbs here actually. Experienced, shown, indicated. There was experience or there was shown a rapid increase in the percentage of orange sold from 2010 to 2016 for example